welcome to the Evolve with Shauna Marie Show. Listen, y'all know what I'm already going to say. We are excited to have you tonight. Listen, we're already in a new month. It's November, and we are going to be giving thanks this entire season. But of course, we don't wait just until November to give thanks. Listen, we kingdom, we believers, we worshipers, we give thanks every single day. So I want to thank all of you, all of my Evolve girls, all of my viewers and watchers and followers who have been supporting, who have been praying, who have been encouraging. Listen, thank you for all of your emails, your inboxes, for all of your love and support. I so, so, so appreciate you. Got to give my Shauna shout outs, of course, to our Evolve sponsor, Miss Linda Burgess from Leak Inheritance. Woo! We love you. We love you. We love you. And of course, to my Evolve Dream Team, thank you. So listen, we're going to hop right into it on tonight. I want you guys to join me. Listen, go pull out your Bibles, all my young people. Go pull out your phone. I know. <laughs> pull up your Bible app. I know. Listen, go pull up. We're going to be coming from Acts 3 today. Acts 3, 1 through 10. So go grab your Bible and let's get right into it. So listen, I want to read this for you. Check this out. It says, now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who seeing Peter and John, Mm, 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 mm. about to go into the temple, asked for alms, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. But, mm, my goodness, mm, y'all forgive me, because this, this, this story really, really, really gets me. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all of the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. So this man had been lame from the womb, right? He'd been lame. So what does lame mean? Lame, lame means that you have suffered injury or a disease to the, to the leg or to the foot. And it, it, is, it, it, it causes paralysis. That's the inability of mobility. Then a, the inability to move, it's a state of being disabled. It's a state of being crippled. It's a, a state of being incapable of transporting oneself from one location to another. See, some of us don't really understand the, the, the importance and the power of our feet. So I'm a biology major, I'm a prophetic dancer, I'm a fitness instructor, and I understand the purpose and the power of these feet. So I understand that they have, uh, uh, you know, 26 bones and 33 joints and over 100 muscles and ligaments and tendons. Don't worry, I'm not going to give you a biology lesson, but I am going to give you a lesson on life that's going to change the trajectory of it. So I need you to take a moment and slow down, hear me in the natural, but also hear me in the spirit, right? See, your feet, they serve as a foundation. They serve as a foundation for your entire body and your feet. They give you support. They provide balance. They, they, they give you a posture, your feet carry you. Hmm. And wherever they are out of line, other things in your body become misaligned. Oh my, 
It's like a car, right? The wheels are the foundation that transports it from point A to point B. I don't care what you got on the inside of the car, how well you don't, you know, you don't fix it up. Listen, y'all ever seen a car and it be on all bricks because they don't went to the the rent the rental wheel and they done got some rented some wheels and rented some tires and all of a sudden they put, got put on bricks. They ain't pay their bill. It's like that. You can't go nowhere if you don't got no foundation or no wheels, right? It's like that car that is misaligned. You ever been out of alignment in your car? When something is off or out of alignment, it's going to give you a sign. It's going to show up. I, I, I remember driving and being in my car going, what, what, what the world is going on? Why is my car veering out the road? I'm going off the road. I'm going off track because it's out of its proper alignment, and if I be, and if I begin to listen, sometimes I look at the tires. The tires have uneven wear and tear on the tires because not properly aligned. And if I begin to accelerate and go to my desired speed, then the wheel begins to shake, and the and <laughs> and the tires begin to shake, and it causes me to decelerate. Hmm. That's why you can't play about your foundation. So this man has been lame. He's been paralyzed from the womb. And he's being carried during prayer time. They said he's being carried during uh, the ninth hour, which is 3 p.m. They, they, they had three, three times they went into prayer. So don't find it. Coincidental that he's being carried to the gate called beautiful at the temple during the prayer time. During the ninth hour, nine, I'm not, I don't do numerology, but nine is a number for birthing, for producing, right? So he's being carried to that gate daily. Catch that. Monday, he's being carried to the gate. Tuesday, he's being carried to the gate. Wednesday, he's being carried to the gate. Thursday, Friday, he's being carried to the gate. Saturday, he's being carried to the gate. Sunday, he's being carried to the gate. Every single day, I'm being carried to the same gate. I'm being carried to the same place. I'm stuck in the same place, in the same posture, in the same posture, in the same position all day, every day. I'm doing the same thing every day. I'm begging for somebody to help me. I'm begging for somebody to support me. I'm begging for somebody to celebrate me. Somebody give me a helping hand. I see who, who am I talking to? I'm coming for those today that have been paralyzed in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Maybe you've been paralyzed from the womb. It's been out of your control when you, when you were born into generational curses and you were born into that rejection. You were born into that addiction or that abandonment. You were born into that sin. You were born into it. It's really, it's really not your fault or those that have been paralyzed by life's circumstances or situations where it has caused you to be stuck, to be stagnant, to be in a place where there's a glass ceiling over your head and you just can't seem to shatter it. What has paralyzed you from moving? What has paralyzed you from being transported from the point A and point B that God is trying to get you to? What has paralyzed you? Is it that molestation? Is it that rape? Is it that domestic violence? Is it that divorce? Is it that betrayal? Is it that unforgiveness, that bitterness, that offense? What has paralyzed you? from moving in to what God has purpose. Put yourself in that position. 
for a moment. If you could just kind of just kind of stand right there and then don't move. All you can do is blink. And that's what many of you have been doing. You've been taking it. I'm just going to take them taking me and carrying me to the same place every day. I'm going to take being stuck. I'm going to take having to always have my head held down and my hands held out. But I'm here to tell you today that there's a shift coming. Your season of ah, having to beg is over. I, your season of having to have your head held down and have your hands out trying to get people to support you and celebrate you and honor you and somebody see me and somebody hear me and somebody heal me and somebody save me and somebody rescue me. That season is over. Over. Can I can I can I show you how and can I show you why? Cause see, here's the reality. The reality is you've been rocking with the wrong people and asking for the wrong thing. I can't even hardly stay in my seat. Well, I'm gonna show you. Go to verses three through seven. Watch what he says. He said, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms and fixing his eyes on them. When John, Peter said, look at us. So that right there tells you that he had to have his head down. God, I, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. All I see is what I've been through. All I see is my current state. All I see is my current condition. All I see is that I'm paralyzed. All I see is that I'm broken. All I see is that I'm rejected. All I see is that I'm abandoned. All I see is place a loader bar. This a low place. Ha, raka, that's all I see, God. I don't see a way out. I don't see nothing else. And these same people that don't seem to see me keep taking me to the same gates every single day to get the same thing. The same result. So he gave them his attention and he was expecting to receive something from them because see, when you've been begging your whole life, uh, give me and hand me and rescue and say, you've been begging, please. We are kingdom. You don't have to beg God for nothing. The earth is a Lord, is a Lord's and the fullness thereof. You are heirs and co heirs. You ain't got to beg. It's already yours. But when you have been in the same state um, with the same scales over your eyes, you can't even see what you need and don't know what to ask for. So you keep asking for the same thing over and over and over again. But watch what happens. Then Peter said, silver and gold, I do not have, but what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and he lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. This is why you got to get a new circle of friends. Somebody who will see you in a place of loader bomb, they'll give you a Holy Ghost assessment and won't give you what you think you need but they'll give you all that they have, and that is Jesus. That's the kingdom. He had already been glorified. They had just got spiritually filled with baptism. Oh, my God. It's the first healing. I'll show y'all. Take it back. Watch this. Matthew and 10. He says, and which he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of the need, the disease. If you go down to verse 5, it says, these 12, Jesus sent out, commanding them, saying, do not go into the way of the Gentiles or enter a city of Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
And as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's Jesus. Oh, my. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Dead. Cast out demons. Freely you have received. Freely you give. He tells him, I ain't even going to provide you with no silver or gold. No money. You're going to give him the kingdom of heaven. See, the issue is we're looking for all. Oh, how I get here, Lord? I guess I'm here because you want me to be here. We're looking for the popular apostles. Ah, ha. Ah. We're, look, we, we, we're looking for the Facebook celebrity apostles. We're looking for those that got the most followers and those that got the most likes and the most supporters and the most influence and the most reach. We're looking for the popular prophets. So you're looking for the handout from those that have been appointed by the world, but not anointed by God. Mm -hmm. You don't need the popularity. You need the anointing. You don't need their influence. You need the power to be delivered. You need the circle that will walk up on you and they will see you and the Holy Ghost assess you and their faith can meet your faith. Listen, because I didn't say he didn't have faith. He had to have had some kind of faith because let him carry them, carry him to the gate. He knew to get to the gate of the temple. He knew to get to the gate of the temple and he knew to go during prayer time. So he had an expectation of a provision being made for him, he had an expectation <laughs> of somebody giving him a helping hand. He just needed the anointed ones. He needed the power. He needed those that had been called, that had been appointed by God, that had been sent to go and to heal, to save, to deliver, to set free, to cast out demons. See, you got to understand, you need somebody that's got the kingdom. And they can unpack it everywhere that they go. That is what it is. The kingdom is within you. It ain't, it, it's outside the four walls. If you can only do church in church, that's error. <laughs> if you can only do church at church, it's error. Come on now. You got to be able to deal with the homeless and those that let the less fortunate, the widows, the orphans, the, uh, your enemies, those you don't like. Can you pray for them? Can you heal them? Can you prophesy to them? Can you save and deliver them? So I say to you, hmm, you got to be able to allow the right divine connection to see you to Holy Ghost assess you, not what you think you need. <laughs> because we don't always know what our can. Can I say this? Oftentimes, our pride will hinder us from being delivered. I done been like this all my life. My mama was that way. My daddy was that way. My grandparents was that way. My aunt, uncle was that way. Well, you were just taught to function in dysfunction. That's all. Ain't no different. So you don't know another way. And when you have been infirmed and when you have been influenced by principalities, then you have a certain amount of scales over your eyes. You can own that. that that's what it is, the influence. So you can only be influenced by what's in you. What's in you drives you. <laughs> what's in you operates you. The enemy can make you think what he wants you to think. Have you ever been, been in a place and been like, Talk about it and being like, I didn't say that. You, did you hear what I said? That's not what I said. That's because the enemy will make people and us hear 
perceive <laughs> what he wants. You can't do destiny by yourself. You can't do healing and deliverance by yourself. You can't do life by yourself. You, you see Peter and John were together. They were together. It's okay to surround yourself with people who know more than you, who are, no, who, who are more powerful than you, that have more wisdom than you, that have more authority and legal access than you. I don't want to be the person that knows the most in my circle. I don't want to be the most powerful in my circle. I don't want to be the most wise in my circle. I'm going to need somebody who can see what I can't see and hear what I can't hear and know what I don't know and have revelation that I may not have yet. I want to encourage you that this is your season where the begging is over. God is sending someone who's going to say, hey, give me your right hand. Let me pull you up. Get up. Arise. Walk. As a matter of fact, he just didn't walk. He leaped. It said immediately his feet and ankles received strength. That means straightway, suddenly, right now, you are getting ready to receive what you need from God. I don't care what it is. Listen, I'm reaching out my right hand to you right now. Get up, arise, walk. I need you to leap. I need you to walk. I need you to praise God for what he is doing. I am pulling you up out of that muck, up out of that mirror, out of that clay, out of that concrete, out of that stuck place, that stagnant place that has hindered you, that has delayed you. Listen, this is not your season to be denied, to be delayed, to be set back. This is your season of your suddenly, your springing up, your leap. You're springing forward. Listen, God's about to do it and is about to do it now. I am extending my faith for your faith. Will you believe it's in the name of Jesus that we're coming together? That's all we got to say. I ain't got a lot. That ain't what Jesus did. Get up. Arise. We ain't got to tarry for it. My faith going to meet your faith. Arise, get up, walk, come out of that stuck place, come out of that stagnant place, come in to your place of fruition, to your place of breakthrough, to your place of healing, to your place of freedom, to your place, that rightful place in the kingdom. See, I'm going to preach kingdom. Jesus. So if I'm talking to you and you feel like, ah, Minister Shauna, that, who that's me. Oh, that's me. That's me. That's me. I've been, I've been trying to do it by myself. I've been trying to do it on my own. I've been trying to do it in my own way. I'm trying to manufacture my own healing and my own blessing. And I just, I can't do it. You're right, you can't without Jesus. So I, I want to extend the invitation to you to just cast your cares upon him because he cared for you. Give it to him. Put it on the altar. If you are watching me and you're saying, you know what? Who that's me that sound good, but God, lay, I don't really know. I don't really know this Jesus. She's she's talking about. I don't, I don't really know him or, or I heard about him. My grandmama and them knew him, but I, I don't really know him for myself. I'm not really saved. Then I extend salvation to you, right? I extend you to know the genius that got up on the cross and died a gruesome death. He was murdered. <laughs> Let's be real. Just for you. <laughs> for your forgiveness, for your salvation, for, for your love, for your destiny, for your purpose, listen, for eternal life. It's as simple as saying, you know what, God, I'm a sinner. 
I confess that you hung blood, died a rose. Got it with all power in your hands. Sent the precious gift of Holy Spirit back for me to comfort me, to be my peace, to, to guide me, to lead me, to teach me. In spirit and truth. I give my life to you. I dedicate my heart to you. God, help me to walk in your ways. Help me to know your word. Help me to hide your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. And connect me with a, a Bible-believing church that will help me walk this gospel out. That will teach me Bible, not world, Bible. Amen. We, it, it, I ain't going to make it hard. It's just that simple. It's all you got to do. So listen, if you can, if you will just continue to walk with God, God's got you. Listen, you're in a different place. Whether you feel it or not, you're already in a different place. So continue. Listen, I love y'all. Continue to join me every single Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Continue to be the light and the salt. Make sure you email us your prayer request. We want to agree with you for what you're expecting from God. Continue to shine, shine, sprinkle, sprinkle. The ball with Shana Marie on Dominion TV. Hey y'all, it's Shauna Marie with the Evolve Talk Show. Listen, I just want to introduce to y'all my new book, 21 Days to Bigger. I'm helping women think, expect, and achieve bigger. Listen, we're taking leaps of faith, putting our faith over fear, and we are finding our next level of purpose and closing the gap from where you are to where you have dreamed of being. Let me be your purpose pusher this season. Make sure that you grab the copy Listen, at I am Shauna Marie. Dot com. I'm ready to see you walk into your Ephesians 3.20 season where God is going to do exceeding abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. Hey y'all, it's Shauna Marie with the Evolve Talk Show. Listen, our Evolve Girl merch is here. You can now rock your faith and the declaration that you are continuing to embrace evolving into all God has purposed you to become that beautiful woman of God. So listen, go to EvolveTalkShow.com, right here at the bottom of the screen, and go order your sweatshirts, your t-shirts, your caps. Y'all, we're going to rock it out for God the dope way, the fly way.